Let's get our guest, Mike Davis, Mike Davis in here with us. He's the founder and president of the Article 3 Project. He's also uh, been involved in the Chief Counsel for Nominations, the U.S. Senate Committee on the Judiciary, and he joins us once again here on the Annie Fry Show. Mike, it's a pleasure to have you back with us today. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Of course. So listening to Claire McCaskill there, uh, a former senator from here in the state of Missouri, it seems as though they were out to get Giuliani as much as we feel like they've been out to get Donald Trump. What do you make of those comments? Well, I forgot who Claire McCaskill was. I, I just remembered <laughs> back in 2018 when we uh, chased her out of the Senate when she voted against Justice Brett Kavanaugh's nomination. Uh, and, you know, after they made bogus allegations against him, six set of bogus allegations, they couldn't just stick to Christine Blasey Ford. They brought in five other buffoons. Uh, Christine Blasey <laughs> Ford was lying through her teeth, but she was the most believable. But then they brought in five others. They're doing the same play now with President Trump. They couldn't just stick to President Trump having his presidential records in the office of former president in Mar-a-Lago, which is allowed by the Presidential Records Act. That's the most plausible case they had. They brought in these three other indictments, this clown, these clown indictments from these clown prosecutors like the uh, Manhattan DA, uh, jo uh, Alvin Bragg, the Soros-funded DA who indicted a former president for the first time ever for the non-crime of a businessman settling a nuisance claim. And then Jack Smith brought his indictment of Trump for the non-crime of having his presidential records. And then Jack Smith indicted again for the non-crime of objecting to a presidential election, which is allowed by the Electoral Count Act of 1887. Twisting arms politically is allowed by the First Amendment. And now we have uh, Fulton County DA Fannie Willis, this Atlanta Democrat charging Trump for the fourth time for, again, for the non-crime of objecting to a presidential election. And hers is the most clownish of them all because she charged 19 different co-defendants and 41 different felonies, and they're not even charging. Jack Smith and Fannie Willis and Merrick Garland and Joe Biden, they're not even charging for the riot. They're not even saying that Trump incited the riot because he didn't. There's zero evidence of that because the House uh, January 6th committee looked at that for years and spent tens of millions of dollars and found zero evidence being it, that he incited the riot. So what is the crime? It is not a crime to object to elections. If it were a crime to object to an election, then Democrats would be in prison for objecting to Republican <laughs> presidential wins in 1968, 2000, 2004, and 2016. This yeah. is lawfare by Democrats because they fear they can't beat President Trump on November 5th, 2024. You know, for, for people who are not legal experts like myself, first of all, we're speaking with Mike Davis, who is a legal expert. We're hearing the term RICO a conspiracy uh, is part of this new conversation coming out of Georgia. When the when it becomes a RICO case in, in these individuals' minds, bring it down to my level here and explain to American voters and taxpayers what that that assertion means. This is so clownish by uh, Fannie Willis that the RICO, that's that, that's the racketeering statute. There's a federal racketeering statute and Georgia has their own racketeering statute. And you they use this in the past to take down the mob. Now Democrats are using the racketeering statutes to take out their political enemies. And it is it is a, a novel. Uh, that's a, the nice way to put it. It is a bizarre legal theory. There is no chance that the Supreme Court of the United States is going to uphold any of these convictions uh, by Jack Smith or Fannie Willis based upon uh, what happened on January 6th, unless they can prove that Trump incited the right, unless they can prove that President Trump had Rudy Giuliani put the real electors in his trunk and uh, you know, and had the fake electors steal their IDs and go in and vote. There's there's no crime here, right? There's no one was duped by what happened on January 6th. That's what Democrats have done in the past, including jo John F. Kennedy did in 1960. You put forward alternate electors. They're not fake electors. They're alternate electors. Everyone knows that there's a legal and a political dispute that is resolved. It was resolved this time, and Biden got put into the presidency. I, there's not a crime here. Even if Trump even if Trump was being mean to his vice president, even if he called down in Georgia and said, find, you know, 11,000 votes that when you say find 11,000 votes, that means there are 11,000 votes to find. He didn't say create 11,000 votes. That's what Democrats do. That's fraud. He said, find them. Right. So this is the Democrats are trying to criminalize the political process. And if they want to go down this path, 
this is going to end our republic. These are republic ending indictments because there's going to be a tit for tat. And this is what happened. Remember, Caesar crossed the Rubicon from Gaul into Rome because of the lawfare against him. Caesar was a populist and the, the, the Roman insiders hated him for this. And so they waged lawfare against him. And so Caesar crossed the Rubicon and it led to a civil war because he felt like there was nothing else to do. And I'm not saying there should be a civil war here, but what's gonna happen is, is there's going to be a tit for tat. Now, the next time there's a Republican president, Trump, and I'm his acting attorney general, during my three week reign of terror, I guarantee you that I'm going to indict people. I'm gonna indict Joe Biden and Hunter Biden and James Biden and every other Democrat who are, who's on my list is going to be indicted uh, during my three week reign of terror as Trump's acting attorney general before I'm chased out of town with my Trump party. Like this is <laughs> insane what the Democrats are doing. And I, and I almost think that this is, these Democrats who are doing this, these aren't liberals who love America. These aren't old school Democrats. These are left, leftists, these are Marxists. These are Jack Smith and Alvin Bragg and Fannie Willis. These are hard charging leftists. And you have to wonder, are they trying to destroy this country? Because there's nothing that is more destructive to America than trying to indict and imprison your political enemies. That's what you do in Z Zimbabwe and other third world Marxist hellholes, and now Atlanta and New York and Washington, D.C. We're speaking with the founder and president of the Article 3 Project, Mike Davis. I mean, some of these things that you're referring to, that's really, like, in, in, in my almost 40 years of lifetime, this is unprecedented historically in this country. And you've talked about the future of the republic. And you've talked about some of these people who you don't consider to be Democrats. They're leftists. They're Marxists. And, you know, we, we saw Barack Obama come in and, and promise in his campaign to fundamentally transform the United States of America. Was this part of his plan that started in 2008? Absolutely. Bar Barack Obama was raised by Marxist. He's He is a Marxist. He was subversive, he got into power, he appointed people to these key posts within the government, including Jack Smith, was put in charge of the public integrity section under Eric Holder. And Jack Smith uh, brought lawfare against former Virginia Governor Bob McDonnell, a likely uh, Republican presidential or vice presidential contender in 2016. They brought these bogus charges against Governor McDonnell. He was convicted of corruption. It wasn't until several years later that the Supreme Court unanimously, eight to nothing, it would have been nine to nothing, reversed Jack Smith's criminal conviction of Governor McDonald, but the damage was done. It is very hard to get a criminal conviction overturned by the Supreme Court. It is nearly po impossible for that to happen unanimously. Jack Smith found the way, and <laughs> it, it should have ended his legal career. He got banished to The Hague, where he was some you know, BS, made up judge in The Hague, Merrick Garland and Joe Biden brought back this loser from exile as a scud missile and political hitman to take out President Trump. And they know this guy has no problem getting reversed unanimously by the Supreme Court. Years down the road, he did his job by taking out McDonald. He's doing his job now by taking out Trump. And so are these other goofball Soros funded DAs like Alvin Bragg and Fannie Willis. Just watch their press conferences. Fannie Willis is she's not exactly the brightest bulb out there, right? And she's bringing in a racketeering, uh, a racketeering uh, indictment against a former president and a leading presidential candidate. Good luck, Fanny. Mike Davis with us right now. When you're talking about how the Supreme Court would never uphold these, I mean, in the time frame between now and when this would be in the hands of the Supreme Court, well, this, that'll move at what appears to be a glacial pace. What happens to Donald Trump's campaign in the meantime? What happens to the country in the meantime? And what happens to this election in the meantime? There, there might be a way to get these January 6 cases in front of the Supreme Court faster. The, the Jack Smith indictment on January 6th and Fannie Willis's. President Trump needs to file a motion to dismiss these indictments and he can make two legal arguments. Number one, presidential immunity, that he was acting within the outer bounds of his power as president of the United States when he was trying to enforce the Electoral Count Act of 1887. And therefore, these states are not allowed to bring uh, uh, civil or criminal uh, charges against a president of the United States based upon what he was doing while he was the president of the United States. It's called presidential immunity. We've had it for nearly 250 years going back to George Washington. Alternatively, if they say he's acting within his personal capacity, which I don't know how they can if he's they're accusing him of using his power as the president to try to twist his 
vice president's arms to make the vice president do something. Only a president could could do that. The vice pre, uh, a presidential candidate could not do that. So he's clearly acting within his official capacity, which is covered by presidential immunity. But even if he's acting within his personal capacity, it's First Amendment. He could raise a First Amendment argument that these charges are bogus. This is political speech and conduct protected by the First Amendment. Remember, they're not charging him with the riots, which would not be protected, right, by either. So if he raises presidential immunity, that is immediately appealable. He can So they can remove this case to the Northern District of Georgia, the federal court, and then the, that judge would have to rule on it. And then it would go to the 11th Circuit, and then the Supreme Court could take that case immediately, interlocutory appeal to the 11th Circuit, rid of mandamus or prohibition to the Supreme Court, they could decide that issue immediately and they would have to because mm -hmm. it's dealing with presidential immunity, just like any other sovereign immunity for any other government official that is immediately appealable. Mike Davis, last question before we let you go. You've spoken about your support for Donald Trump and what you will do in your uh, aptly named three week reign of terrors as acting attorney general. In your opinion, you know, they're trying to they're trying to move Donald Trump so that he cannot campaign. They're trying to take him off the campaign trail and make it impossible for him to complete the, the primary process, to become the nominee, to become the president of the United States again. Uh, is there anybody else? who can win the primary, win the Republican nomination, win the general election, and do what needs to be done to drain the swamp? Is there anyone other than Donald Trump that can do that? No, and we have to stick with Donald Trump because if we let this lawfare prevail, our country's over. This is the same thing that I said to senators uh, behind the scenes during the Kavanaugh confirmation. I didn't want Kavanaugh before he was picked. I think he's a very nice guy, but I thought he was too moderate. He was too much in the mold of the chief justice. I wanted someone more conservative. But once they picked him, I was not going as the chief counsel for nominations. There was no way in hell I was going to let the Me Too mob take him down because it was so much bigger than Brett Kavanaugh. This is so much bigger than Donald Trump that if we let these leftist mobs win, our country is done. Like if we're going to say that you're guilty, even when you're proven innocent, there's a presumption of guilt. You're guilty even when you're proven innocent. Just like during the Kavanaugh, if I just imagine that your brother, your son, your father, uh, your cousin gets uh, uh, falsely accused of sexual misconduct and they're immediately guilty and canceled, even if they're innocent, even if they can prove that they're innocent. With here, this is lawfare. If you if they use this lawfare to go after President Trump, do you think they're going to stop with President Trump? Mm -hmm. Trump's in their way. Think of 100 years of Marxism. They killed 100 million people. They, they're, these are the same leftists who didn't stop with trying to kill Kavanaugh uh, you know, they didn't stop with the conservative justices like Thomas Alito Gorsuch. They tried to kill Kavanaugh in his home, and now they're even going after the chief justice and his wife, like the, the most moderate justice of, of them all. These are not, this is not going to end with Donald Trump. This is going to end with leftists destroying our country. And how we stop this lawfare is people say, you know what, we're not going to let Democrat prosecutors and Democrat judges and Democrat juries and Democrat hellholes like New York. D.C. and Atlanta decide the next president of the United States. We, the people, we, the American people, get to decide this. And you're seeing it, you're seeing this in the polling, Annie, that this is helping Trump. It's going to put him back in the White House. Yeah, the stakes are absolutely high. Mike Davis, we're grateful for your time today uh, to talk about this issue. I'm sure there will be more legal concerns in the near future. We always welcome you back on the show. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Thank you, Annie. Of course, we'll do it again soon. Uh, wonderful to have Mike Davis on the show with us. He is the founder and president of the Article 3 Project, the founder and president of the Internet Accountability Project. He's also, as he was speaking about there, the chief counsel for nominations, U.S. Senate Committee on the Judiciary. A lot of legal experience in Washington, D.C. 